Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Greta Oetz, paper conservator from Conservation and Digitalization Center, Canut. And I'm here to present Canut's biggest and most interesting project from last year, conservation of a large-scale wallpaper scheme. In 2015, during the renovation work in the historic building at Kiriku Street 2, Tallinn, Tompea, workmen discovered a double wall hiding a papered wall underneath. This is the first hole they made. And this is what came out. Let's go back to the beginning. Originally, the building had been noblesman's town residence. Relying on the architectural history review, it is assumed that the interior design of the wallpapered room dates back to the 1880s, when it was still serving it in its original purpose. And the owner at that time was the family von Rosen. Lady enjoying the room as her salon was the Baroness Marie von Croft. Uh, the wallpaper scheme typical of the era had been hidden for a long time. Since it was covered with a double wall, probably for insulation purpose, national, international, yeah, national heritage experts and the building owner came to the decision that the wallpaper should be preserved as much as possible and exhibited on its initial location. The conservation works were trusted to us, the conservators of Canut. Extensive teamwork lasted for half a year, engaged specialists from the departments of, different departments of Canut. Project provided us a lot of new experience and new methodologies were developed specially for the conservation and preservation of this large-scale paper object, which was supposed to be restored as a part of interior design on its original location. This large uh, paper-based wall scheme, combined of two different wallpapers, is a really unique find in Estonia. Through the entire wall, the composition is horizontally split. The lower part of the scheme has a deep red flock lambri, and in the center is a grey distemper wallpaper with a printed golden floral pattern, uh, bordered on each four side by a red flock braiding. The lambri and the braiding are made of the same good quality flock paper. Techniques and materials used refer to a professional wallpapering work that was probably ordered as a complete solution. Series of nail holes found between grey and red wallpaper suggested that the joints were covered with a thin strip of wooden profile which, considering the wallpaper pattern, were probably painted in gold. On the grey wallpaper, we can see pattern of repeated bouquets in two sizes printed in gold leaf. In addition, a blank printed circuit of fine embossed rhombus pattern is printed on the grey surface. In the composition, lambri is applied as one horizontal tile. Braiding is cut out from a wider roll as the cutting edges are uneven. In some places, there are two layers of grey wallpaper. It seems that during some later refreshments of the interior, more worn out spots of wallpaper have been covered with the leftover, leftovers of the initial wallpaper. As I mentioned before, as I mentioned before, the wall in question was found behind a double wall. An additional inner wooden wall had been added on the stone one during some repairs. As a result, the wallpaper that had been pasted on the outer limestone wall had been sealed in a closed space. The humidity coming from the stone wall had condensed in the confined space between two walls. The closed, humid environment caused extensive mold damage and the decay of the paper. During the building work, several floor-to-ceiling cavities had been made into the wall to insert wooden beams for a second wall. These cavities caused the wallpaper to be totally destroyed and thus lost in those areas. Only two grey wallpaper, wallpaper tiles had retained their original width. The surface of the wallpaper was heavily soiled, covered with dirt and plaster residue. In several places, paint layer was discolored and worn out. In others, the structure of the paper was simply rotten. Three wallpapers wallpaper tiles on the left had especially strong damages of soiling and were destroyed. The flock paper on the braiding had 
preserved quite well. In the corners of the room, there were missing parts due to the wall construction. The Lambrie moisture damage occurred mostly on its lower area, around 20 centimeters from the floor. Due to the moisture and mold, the paper had ceased to exist and become more soil-like substance in the flock area. Due to the severe damages and poor condition of the wallpaper could not be restored in situ. Damaged wallpaper fragments had to be removed from, from the wall. As there were a lot of missing parts, they had to be filled in. The best solution would have been to prepare a reconstruction of the historical wallpaper using traditional materials and methods. Sadly, the amount of this task did not meet the resources available and as a compromise, decision was made to cover the missing area with a contemporary marking material. As a contemporary marking material is not suitable for filling in the losses inside the historical material, it was decided that, that the preserved fragments will be combined and mounted together to form a complete wallpaper tiles of their original size and pattern. And the restored wallpapers will be mounted on the wall and remaining area will be covered with the marking material of contemporary origin. Work was carried out in several stages. First was the surface cleaning of the whole scheme, which was carried out in situ. We also found out that the grey paint was not water soluble, but sensitive, uh, but sensitive abrasive treatments. As a result, it was decided that the wallpaper need and can sustain wet treatment like washing, repairing and lining. After the dry cleaning of the wallpaper, three methods were tested for dismounting. The dry method, steam humidifier treatment, and moisturizing with methyl cellulose. The loose fragments were best to be removed dry, using mechanical methods only. Dry method was not suitable for larger, fra larger fragments that were strongly attached to the wall, because the paint layer tended to crack when the wallpaper was bended dry. Moisturizing with steam yet would turn the degraded paper too fragile, so the methyl cellulose method was chosen. For that, the wallpaper were covered with a layer of methyl cellulose glue, and on that, the protective layer of facing was brushed on gently. Facing was also needed to support the degraded material while dismounting and later handling. The dismounted tiles and fragments were rolled on a carpet tube and transported to Canut to continue with the conservation process. In the studio, the first process was again dry surface cleaning. The reverse side was cleaned of plaster, glue, waste paper, and waste paper residue. For a more strongly attached part, parts, we used a mixture of 5% methyl cellulose and 50% of water ethanol solution to soften up the waste paper and the initial ray paste it had been glued with. To proceed with washing all the fragments that were still attached to each other by the edges or in several layers had to be dismounted individually. All fragments were carefully inspected, sorted by pattern and the state of discoloration and fitted with each other to form wallpaper tiles. We were able to form six grey wallpaper tiles, two-fifths of the red flock lambri and two long pieces of braiding of the original material. Then the fragments of the one tile were washed at the time to be able to mount them on a temporary lining paper immediately after washing. It was not possible to wash the fragments by soaking in water because of their condition, size and decorative layers. Red flocking, flock fragments were smaller and could be washed on the vacuum table. Grey wallpaper fragments were mostly too long for that and for therefore they were washed on a patch of wet plotters. We used a light methyl cellulose solution for washing and added 50% ethanol to the liquid in order to help the solution penetrate into the material and also to fasten up the drying process afterwards. The wallpaper fragments were combined to tiles and lined on a 40 gram Japanese paper. The line, line tiles were flattened and dried Dry, dried fixed on long waterproof veneer panels inspired by Caribari method. Is it moving? Ah, yes. For lining a full length of 
sheet of Japanese paper was pasted up with a thin paste and pressed down into position on the back of the damp object. Supported by holotext, the whole thing is then turned over onto the drying board, leaving the original face up on top. The holotext covering the object is then peeled off, and the edges of the lining paper were then attached to the drying board with a thicker paste and the object could be left to flatten and dry naturally. Next time-consuming step was filling in the losses. It was done while the tiles were still fixed on the boards. For filling, we used so small fragments of the original that were left over on the both grey and red wallpaper. Some retouching was applied after the wallpaper was attached to the wall on its original place and light conditions. After the renovation work, wallpaper tiles were transported back to Tompea and mounted back on the wall. Beforehand, the surface of the original wall had been disinfected and covered with the appropriate waste paper. To finish up, I would like to show you a short video of the mounting process and the finished wall, please. Thank you. 